What's going on everyone? If you were ever curious about how to implement some simple encryption, well today's your lucky day. Today I'm going to implement the substitution cipher, which conceptually is a very simple method of encryption. In fact, I bet a lot of you have already used it and you weren't even aware of it. So let's first have a look at what a substitution cipher is. So a substitution cipher is basically when you take a list of characters and then you replace each one of the characters with a different character according to some pattern. So in this case on the screen you could see that the first 13 characters is going to be substituted by the second 13 characters and vice versa. So in this case if you had the letter C you would substitute a P. If you had the letter S you would substitute an F. In this particular example hello would be the word you would start with and URYYB would be the letters you end up with. And that's according to the substitution from above. So remember when I said you might have used this without realizing it? Well, if you're anything like me, you used to trade encrypted notes, maybe in school, and but you would do something very simple. Like I used to say, here's a note, take each letter and simply replace it with the next letter. So like an A became a B, a D became an E, and so on and so forth. So to reverse it, you just go the opposite direction, is take the letter before that letter. So now that you understand what a substitution cipher is, let's implement it in Python. Now in line 7 here, the first thing is the key. And the purpose of the key is to describe how the substitution takes place. So, like in my notes example, the key was take the next letter in, in the alphabet and replace it with the previous letter. So next I need to create an, a list of every character that's part of the base64 character set. And the reason I'm using base64 is I want to encrypt things that are more than just letters. So when you're sending notes, you're using just letters but not everything in a computer is just a letter. It could be a number, it could be an unprintable character. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is convert it to base64 and then use the base64 characters as the substitution set. So next is I define two methods down here. One is encrypt and one is decrypt. And then down here I define flags which do different things. So the purpose of this script, it's gonna take information from standard in so you can you can pipe it in with cat or whatever else, and then it's going to print the output to standard out. This will allow us to use this generically as part of a pipeline. So to begin the encryption, the first step is going to be to base64 encode whatever we're going to want to encrypt, and then create a list out of each character. Then we're going to call our convert method, which can either do the encryption or the decryption. The next thing we need to do is, now that we're in this convert method, is we're going to take a SHA-512 hash of the key. And the reason a hash is a good thing to use is because we get to take advantage of what's called the avalanche effect, which is to say that if the key changes even one digit, we get a totally new hash. And you'll see next, because the hash is going to be responsible for further describing how the substitution occurs, it's going to be important that the hash is completely different no matter what the key is, even if it's a small change. So now we're going to define our substitutions or our, our cipher, and that's going to start by just being a copy of the base64 characters. And now it's time to actually start scrambling up those substitutions. So the algorithm I've made to actually scramble the substitutions is I'm going to loop over every letter in the hash. And then f for that letter, which is of course a hexadecimal letter, I'm going to convert it to an integer, which is going to be anywhere from 0 to 15. And then I'm going to use that to determine what position I want to take a letter from and place at the beginning of the list. In effect, what this is doing is it's just taking random characters from the list and placing them at the beginning of the list. And each time I move a character to the beginning of the list, I go ahead and I just reverse the list. So now I've basically ended up with two lists. I have the B64 characters, which is just all the characters in order. And then I have Cypher, which is all those same characters, but completely scrambled now. And next step is I'm actually going to create, I'm going to create the mapping. So I've created a, a new dictionary and I'm going to start creating key value mappings for what the substitutions are. So here I'm looping over the base64 characters and I'm taking the index that it's on and I'm taking the value from cipher for whatever index that is. So you could just imagine, imagine two lists and each list has, say, 65 items in it. I'm really just putting those together. The first list is going to be the keys, and the second list is going to be the values. So remember, this method handles both encryption and decryption. So the next thing I have to check is, is a decryption operation happening? Because if it is, I need to take that dictionary, and I need to swap 
the keys and the values because that's how I'm going to actually decrypt it. And then finally I just loop through each character of the string and I replace it with whatever the current character is according to the substitution dictionary. And you can see that occurs here. Then I just take the list of characters and just return a plain string. And then decryption is the exact same process except the substitutions are just reversed and when we get base64 back we have to decode that into plain text. And that occurs here. So let's actually use this. So in my terminal now, let's check out the files. So first is the input file, which is a neat little ASCII art I made, a little smiley face that says hello friend, and that's the thing that we're going to actually encrypt. So remember I said the program takes standard in and outputs to standard out, so that means this is going to be as simple as taking input.txt and piping it over to sbox.py and then use a dash e to encrypt. And when I hit enter, you see I get all these stuff here. So what you're seeing here is base64, but if you went to try to decode this, you'd find that it's all just junk. You can't read it. So if I wanted to decrypt this at this point, I could just pipe this encrypted text into the same file, but instead use a dash D for decrypt. And then when I hit enter, I get the original message back out. You can also use this to do several rounds of encryption. So for instance, I can take the input, I can pipe it to sbox dash E, and then instead of hitting enter, I'm going to copy this several times. So this is three rounds of encryption, and I'll write that out to ank.txt. So now if I open up ank.txt, I just have a bunch of garbage here. Just a bunch of stuff. So just to review what I did here is I piped the plain text into sbox.py for the first round of encryption, and because that outputs the encrypted text to standard out, I piped that into another round of encryption, and then this outputted the encrypted text having been encrypted now twice, and then a third time, and then simply wrote it to file ank.txt. So I can perform the exact opposite now. I can do cat ank.txt, pipe that to dash d this time. I will do that three times. And then when I hit enter, I get the text back out. Now next I just want to prove that the key really does work. If you have the wrong key, it's not going to work. So I'm going to use ank.txt, which is encrypted using the key you see here. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete the 8, just for a different key. And then when I come back here to try to decrypt it again, you get this message that said it could not decrypt. If I now go, if I now go back and I put that 8 back, I come back to run it again, everything's fine. And that's Substitution Cipher. I, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I, I personally find encryption to be just fascinating subject matter. And maybe you do too. See you next video.